Imagine if everyone on Earth decided to skip the next 1,000 years. Humanity collectively retreats to specially built underground bunkers, each person settling into their comfortable beds. The last one awake sets the alarm clock for a thousand years in the future, says goodnight to the millions of robot helpers, and closes their eyes. But what happens next? What would the world look like when we wake up after 1,000 years of sleep? In just one day, the world begins to change. Power plants shut down, and the lights in cities all over the world flicker out. Without us, nature quickly takes over. Las Vegas, powered by its hydroelectric plant, is the last bright spot on the planet, but even it is eerily silent, its neon lights shining down on empty streets. Within a week, raccoons begin to move into our homes, unbothered by anyone scaring them off. They raid the fridges, rummage through our trash, and even take over our houses. Domestic animals, thankfully, have been taken underground with us, because who wouldn't want to sleep for a millennium with a cat curled up beside them? After a month, nature begins its invasion into cities. Trees and plants push their way into every crack and crevice, while lions, now free from their zoo enclosures, roam the streets. Without electricity, the world's food spoils, attracting scavengers and pests. The quiet chaos has begun. A year passes, and ports become scenes of chaos. Cargo ships break free from their docks and drift aimlessly, sometimes crashing into bridges and each other. In the streets, vines and ivy climb buildings, while animals claim our abandoned towns as their own. By now, our once bustling cities are barely recognizable. Greenery overtakes streets, and skyscrapers begin to collapse from neglect. The once glittering lights of Times Square and Las Vegas are long gone. Even the International Space Station, once a marvel of human achievement, falls from orbit and burns up in the atmosphere. The world continues to transform. Dams and hydroelectric power plants collapse, flooding towns and cities. Fish swim in the streets where cars once drove. London and Amsterdam are sinking, their once vital drainage systems failing. As wildfires rage unchecked, old warehouses filled with fireworks ignite, lighting up the sky in brilliant displays no one is around to see. Fifty years pass, and still there are echoes of our existence. Parrots, the last animals that remember human speech, mimic phrases they learned long ago. Yet by 100 years, the world looks as though we vanished centuries ago. Iconic landmarks like the Golden Gate Bridge, Big Ben, and the Burj Al Arab crumble, while nature reclaims every inch of land. Even our greatest works of art aren't spared. Microscopic bacteria begin devouring the Mona Lisa, and insects finish the job breaking into her once-protected glass box. Fast forward to 150 years, and a third of the world's skyscrapers have collapsed. Washington, D.C. sinks into a swamp, while Los Angeles transforms into a savanna, complete with wandering elephants. By 300 years, our cars are rusted relics, their tires still decaying. The great leaning tower of Pisa finally gives in and topples. 500 years later, there's hardly any trace of us, the Statue of Liberty has fallen, Venice is submerged, and most of our cities are piles of rubble. Yet some structures, like the Pyramids of Giza and the Great Wall of China, still stand, silent witnesses to a vanished civilization. After a millennium of rest, the alarm finally rings. Humanity stirs and wakes up, stretching after the longest sleep in history. The bunkers have preserved a perfect climate, and everything they need to restart life is still intact. But the world they emerge into is unrecognizable. Nature has reclaimed the Earth. Why did humanity go to sleep for a thousand years? Well, they made a collective decision to give the planet a break. The atmosphere, the oceans, the animals and the plants, all are healthier now. Our absence allowed nature to heal. But as humanity steps back into the world, they face a daunting task, rebuilding civilization. With their technology and knowledge intact, they have a second chance to get it right. The question is, what will they do with their mulligan?